Hello, everyone. Hello and welcome. Welcome back to some more Adobe Live, hanging out right here on Behance.net. Thanks for hanging out with us. And a very special thanks to our guest today, Fabiola. Thanks for coming back. Hi, thanks for being back, Evan. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're, we're going to be continuing on with uh, your work from yesterday. But if people weren't with us uh, yesterday, Fabiola is an illustrator, a content creator, um, digital creative of many types working in traditional media and also a lot of a lot of illustration a lot of digital illustration i'm excited because today we are going to we are going to jump into we're going to jump into what it's it's we're going to be doing some sketching yesterday we were doing a lot of video but today fresco we are getting el fresco which i think means outside i don't know uh, <laughs> but, uh yeah we're, we're going to be jumping into that stuff um i'm excited to to get into it um if folks if there are are watching if you're just coming from getting a brief from one of your daily creative challenges. Everybody, please do more of those. Keep those going. There's more more good challenges for you every day. Uh, lots of challenges this week. You're going to love it. we got things in Illustrator. we got things in XD. All things to kind of push your creativity. Um, the other thing that I'm going to say is that uh, if, you're, if you're watching this on YouTube, we're pushing this out on YouTube, but we're mostly here on Behance. We want to see you on Behance with us. So come on in, jump in the chat, tell us who you are, tell you tell us what you're doing. We want to know, we want to see you. So we, we got to see, got to see everybody in there. So it's so good to see, <laughs> what do we got? We got uh, Robert in here, Voodoo Val, of course, keeping us all honest in there. Thank you so much. <laughs> but uh, Robert, Bernadetta, hey, my buddy Umicorn is here. This is fantastic. <laughs> so good to see so many people coming out. Uh, Jack Watson, hello, hello. But yeah, we want we want you to you know tell tell us what you think, tell us what you're doing. We want to know uh, we want to know everything that's going on. So um, I'm trying to think if there's any other housekeeping that we need to get into. I think that'll do it for now. We have an artist spotlight coming up uh, as well, so stay tuned for that. If you have an artist you would like us to spotlight, please use the link up in the top of the tab over on the chat in Behance and uh, yeah, tell us people you want us to feature. But, you know, without further ado, Fabiola, Fabiola, I must know, what are we doing today? Yes. Okay. So today we're continuing editing the YouTube video that I'm working on, which is a seven day sketchbook challenge YouTube video. Um, here we are. Let me go back to my, let me reset my workspace and make sure that we're every, where we need to be. So today we're continuing to edit this video and overnight I kind of got us caught up because there was a lot of just a little bit of the more mundane cut, edit, drag, drag down, you know, that kind of stuff. So now our timeline is full and I've color coded it. So each, each new color is a different day. So you can get an idea. Whoop, whoop, whoop. And there was someone yesterday who asked me, how long should this video be? And I so boldly and confidently said, 15 minutes. <laughs> it's 30 minutes. <laughs> I remember you were very emphatic. That you were, I, was, I was like, 15 minutes. That's all you need. And it's true. 15 minutes is all you need. But we have seven days. <laughs> how can I cut seven days of drawing into only 15 minutes without it? Like you said, Evan, getting to look like stop motion. <laughs> um, which it does at, at times look like stop motion, but I think I've got it to an acceptable level and I still couldn't only get it down to 30 minutes. If we're lucky, maybe later tonight, I can cut it down another five, 10 minutes. If I'm like really precious or not precious, ruthless, um, <laughs> with it. But for, for our purposes today, it's 30 minutes. We'll see what happens, but so overnight, I finished up the timeline. 
I added a little more audio um, right here, but I got to fill that in. But today, um, oh, let me just give you a little recap of what we did yesterday. So yesterday I went through the project setup over here. I showed you how to cut clips, how to create um, the little intro montage using the uh, cut to sequence, I think it's called, automate to sequence. Um, and then I just showed you, you know, how to speed things up, how to add, um, how to edit some of the audio using both the essential sounds panel and um, using the uh, audio panel here where you do the audio track mixer. And finally, the last thing I showed you right at the end was how to remix the audio so you can make any song as long as you need it or as short as you need it. Um, so today, we're going to get started with some, actually with some uh, time remapping because I meant to show you this yesterday, but I was so caught up with, with everything else that I, it slipped my mind. So I want to show you some time remapping. And I'm going to do it on a sample footage because I've done it to like most of these clips already, but I want to show you kind of the whole way through. But if I did that all day yesterday, we would have been here for way more than two hours. Yeah. Well, it's fantastic. And I know, you know, because you you showed sort of using the um, just the speed uh, properties of a clip. Yes. To push that down. So. I guess what's kind of the difference between that and time remapping in case people are uh, wondering. In case people don't know, yes. I'm trying to find a good clip here to show you the difference. Let them load. Okay, so with the, um, let me open a, a little sequence that we can play with. Okay, so we're gonna play on this sequence. This is like my sketching sequence. So if I bring down this clip, the main difference with, and maybe we can do a side by side, Evan, so people can really get an idea. Um, so, in contrast for them. Yes. So, we're looking here at the program monitor. So, if I do speed and duration and I speed this up 500% because I'm trying to be ruthless here, um, this is kind of what it looks like. Let it load, let it process. Oh, yeah. Let's mute that little chipmunk audio for yes. you. Yes. So it's kind of the same speed the whole way through. It's still kind of processing what that looks like, but um, it's a steady speed the whole way through. It's 500% faster across the board. Um, but if we do the time remapping and I... Yes. So um, when we do the time remapping, we actually go into effect controls and let me move this over and we're going to use here. It's, it's not hidden, but you've probably overlooked it your whole life. Um, <laughs> it's right here. You click, we want to first add a keyframe so that it's at a hundred percent. So that's at a hundred percent speed. Then let's say, um, let's see at kind of an interesting point. Maybe when I add the hair, that's when I want it to go back to real time. So right now I'm just gonna keyframe it. And let's say up until there, I want it to be in real time. And then I'm just gonna speed, speed up the rest of the clip. I'm gonna put another keyframe in. But then when you open up right here, this panel, and I wanna kind of see if I can. Make it a little bigger for you guys. Close this panel. Close this panel. Oop. Ah! Everything's moving on me. <laughs> Ooh, where did it go? It's because I'm at the end. I think that's why. What just happened? Oh, here we go. <laughs> I clicked something. It's high classically. Um, so I have all my points here right now. Everything is at a hundred percent, but I want the beginning part to be faster. So I just start moving this. I'm just, I click the line and I'm dragging it up. Okay. So I moved it to 4.6, let's say five. And then I want the other end of the frame to also be five. So now we have it like this. 
And now everything between here and here is at 400, just about. Everything between here and here is at 400. But then right here, it's still at 100. And the cool thing with this is that, let me see if I can, yes. When you're editing, you can also, so here it's really, you can see that this is really abrupt. It's gonna go from one speed to the next very abruptly. Let me see if I can. I'm scared to move things. I feel like I'll lose them forever. Okay, hold on. Then it suddenly goes back to normal speed. Same here. And then we're sped up. It was started off normal and then it starts speeding up. Um, but that's kind of abrupt. So the cool thing is that if you zoom in with time remapping, you can actually click into here. Let me see if I can. I'm always a little scared to do that, but okay. And you can drag these points and kind of make it the smoothest transition between uh, fast and slow. And I think mathematically it does something where it's really smooth. I couldn't tell you what that really means, but it's making it smoother. I think it like does it so that it's like even or something the whole time. I don't know. <laughs> I'm not going to pretend to know, but it's different. Here we go. Yeah, there we go. So I'm opening it. Does the job. It does what we want. Which it is does what we want. If you want to know the specifics, um, that'd be somebody else's live stream. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, this is so. What's really interesting to me is that I work with time remapping in After Effects often, right? And the the language in in that format is very different because we think about what time is it and then we set keyframes. But this thinking about speed is quite a bit more intuitive, I think. Um, and uh, I like I like this. This this works really well to bring us in and out of these like moments of focus and then moments we want to speed through. I think that's really great. Yes, I think um, it's a little bit harder to for you to tell the difference with time remapping here. Like maybe some of you could say, why don't you just cut this portion off and then set that at 100% and then do the outside bits at 500%. But then again, it would just be really abrupt. And here it's like smoothing the way Something about the frame rates makes more sense. Uh, I'll leave it at that. Um, <laughs> and I think the other cool thing, it's not super uh, noticeable in this kind of footage, but like I remembered about this because I was watching some reality TV and I saw that they used it on some really nice, you know, B-roll. And it looks really cool when you use it on kind of like a moving object through the frame or something like that. You know, here it's it's just my hand, so it's not as dramatic, but let's see, we're just gonna play this. Let me see if I can, um, I'm just gonna make it a little tighter so that we can watch it in real time without sitting here for forever. Now it's gonna... <laughs> I'm just gonna move this over so we can notice what's going on. Yeah, I'm pretty imperfect with it because it's, to me, it doesn't have to be that perfect, but um, you can get really precise with this if you have some really cool B-roll that you're working with. Okay, so now I'm gonna put the playhead there and we're gonna go ahead and watch it and see how it how works. So it's pretty fast there. It probably has to render through once. Yeah, it's gotta, it's gotta think about it's it for gotta a Gotta think about it for a second. Let's see if we can get it to replay. And then uh, there's a question in the chat. Rick is asking that, uh, as we can see that video portion, the video part of that clip has been shortened, um, but it looks like the audio has been left behind. The audio remains its original length. Um, I don't know, what's what's going on there? Would you, would you end up using the audio from this probably? Probably not, I'm gonna get. <laughs> yeah, that's the thing. I don't really mind in this, like, in this uh, use, like, I'm not going to use this audio where it's like the scratching of the pencil and like my hot breath up close to the paper. Um, I don't, I don't care about that audio. I'll probably honestly just like unlink it and delete it. 
Um, but I guess if you are using the audio, you might want to separate that or keep the little portion that you want, um, something to think about. But I think for most people when they're using time remapping and it's just like you're trying to speed things up and slow things down in like a really cool way, you're probably not going to use that audio or you might use like audio effects. Yeah, it'd be kind of like oscillating between like a chip monkey and then like a yeah because it's speeding it up as well so that'll be wild so let's see if now it'll play through a little now, bit better considered maybe adding more pencil scratching and heavy breathing to your channel really embracing an asmr aspect to it i don't know yes i have a separate recording okay of, of my hot breath that i like to <laughs> put in very low just to kind of keep it consistent it's a very special experience for yes but yeah see i would just cut it off if i if i want to keep the audio for some reason I'll, i would just cut it off but otherwise i'll unlink it right click unlink delete it you could also just i'm pretty sure you could also just disable it if you wanted to um just oh wait that disables the entire clip so you'd still have to unlink it and then you could disable if for some reason you were like worried about deleting it which I do get worried about deleting things sometimes. Um, so yeah, that's something that I did yesterday to a lot of the clips of the drawing because yeah, I'm aware that drawing is kind of boring um, and maybe only interesting for a little portion of it. So that's kind of a cool thing, but there's definitely some more exciting uses for it um, that maybe aren't applicable to this video, but you should definitely keep that in your back pocket. It's right in the effects controls. You can find it really easily and you may as well play with it. <laughs> you heard it here for folks. <laughs> play with time. Nothing bad ever happens. <laughs> this play is... with time. It's fake. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. You don't cause any paradoxes. This is a safe place to do it. It's yes. Good. Okay, uh, let me reset that because if I don't reset, I feel disoriented. <laughs> Back to the main sequence because yeah what are we what are we going to be doing uh next what's our what's our okay. roadmap here yes yeah, so next i just wanted to catch you up on that let's work on some color correction i'll be honest with you guys and i don't tend to color correct too much because um as long as the colors of the artwork are um kind of matching what i want it to match i don't want to mess with it too much because then the colors are way off um but I want to show you how you can get that done. So we're going to create, we're going to go here to our pro in our main project. We're going to create a new item and then click adjustment layer. Um, I just click. Okay. <laughs> so I tend to just click. Okay. On a lot of things in premiere, you can't go wrong. Um, and then we have this adjustment layer. Now, if I click on it, it's empty. Wow. So exciting. Um, it's empty because we can do whatever we want to it. It's, this is the equivalent of a blank canvas, but it's dark black instead of white. But it's okay, we can get comfortable with this. So I'm gonna put this in my everything else bin. So I, oh look, I have a, another one. So now I'm gonna be confused. Okay, hold on, let me just delete both. <laughs> I don't wanna get confused. New adjustment layer, okay. I'm gonna go ahead and rename it. Um, live stream adjustment layer so we all know put that in there and now i'm gonna bring it down to my timeline it's really little let's zoom in it's just a baby layer it's a, it's a little little layer very innocent not doing much for us yet okay so right now i'm gonna work on this adjustment layer i'm gonna work on it for the intro now um the intro footage that I have here, I filmed with the the DJI pocket camera. So I know, which I have here, because I know some people asked me about it yesterday. So I wanted to have it here. Um, I know it has a different look and feel than let's say this footage. Um, so before we start messing around with our adjustment layer, we could um, color match this footage the DJI footage here, these purple ones, to this blue footage. Um, 
no, let's give it a shot. I don't often do this because I just tend to go right into my DJI footage and just edit it because I'm not using it so much throughout the, um, I'm just using it here at the beginning, mm. but let's give it a shot. So since I haven't done this in a, in a minute, let's go to color match. Wait, match, match frame, sequence, match frame. Did it show up somewhere and it's hidden? Hold on. It looks like it's up in your uh, source monitor there. Oh. Wait. I think I'm confused. <laughs> I we're. Am I supposed to have, I guess I'm supposed to have this where I want it to be matched. Yeah, it depends on which, you know, which which frame will we be uh, matching to which. I want the, this purple frame to match to the blue frame. And I've done this before, but I thought there was a whole other window that popped up that let me select it. Hmm. Um, so you may need the uh, the match uh, effect if you if you want to get into one of those areas. Match effect. Let's see. So it should be, let's see here. Mm -hmm. Audio. One second. I swear I've done this before, you guys. You know how they switch things up. No, I'm not blaming Premiere. I'm blaming myself. But I thought there was this like window that came up and it let me select the frame that I wanted to match it to. But now it's just sort of confusing me. So hmm. let's just, I'm not, I, I don't know if maybe like, the other window is hidden you like this. No, there's no other yeah. windows. Okay. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe I'm, I've just gone crazy. Re <laughs> reverse match the frame. Oh, okay. So if I put it here and I say match the frame. Okay. Clearly I'm lost. So we're going to move on from that. No, yeah, it's all good. Command D. Mm. Oh, now I just moved that. Okay. But what we can do is there are two ways to kind of color correct this DJI footage that you're seeing here in the program menu. Mm. So I can just, I tend to, when I don't have a ton of it, like, like this, I have 10 little um, clips. I tend to just edit the one clip and then copy and paste. That's kind of like the poor man's way of doing it, which I'm fine with, or our adjustment layer could come in because we're affecting, we want to go ahead and affect all of those. Um, we could work in the adjustment layer. So you can see here, if I click this, that goes to the DJI footage affecting only one clip or the adjustment layer that would affect all of these clips and even further if we wanted to move it further so let's work on the adjustment layers not as fancy as as um color matching but also gets the job done so click on the color match on the adjustment layer and then i want to bring up my essential graphics do i already have it i have it accidentally open in here I'm going to freak out if it moves too much. Here we go. So I went to the color workspace and I'm selected the live stream adjustment layer, which now I'm going to um, rename one more time. I'm going to say intro adjustment layer. Mm. Oh, and uh, so this is uh, uh, Mahesh over at, uh, or Mahesh over at the, on the, who's watching on YouTube was saying uh, that there is a way to color match. You can color match actually inside of the Lumetri uh, panel. There'll be a little. Oh, right here. Uh, kinda, uh, which map. I'm, which I'm in right now. No. <laughs> yeah. So it'll be, it'll be towards the bottom that we. Uh, so color, color match. Or wheels. Comparison view. Should I do it? Okay. I, I feel like. <laughs> Get into risky territory. This is risky, you guys. This is very risky. Oh, but now we're on the adjustment layer. Hold on. We're doing all sorts of crazy things. <laughs> Let me click um, the... Well, I wonder if it would just work on... Let's try it on the adjustment layer. Um, 
Okay, so I'm trying to think if it will actually work on the adjustment layer. And then we go further. So on the left, we're seeing kind of what we want to color match to, I believe. So I want to color match to this footage. Um, and then on, on the right, I have kind of the sequence, what we're seeing on the sequence, which is this DJI footage. So we're clicking on it. Now, let's see what happens when I press apply match. Crazy things could happen here, you guys. This is live. What happened? Okay. <laughs> Look at that. It made the colors a little bit more kind of orangey looking. Mm. So I don't know if that's, I guess it's color matched. Maybe, maybe this footage is a little bit yellow, but I'm not loving it, but it, it's a starting point. Mm. Um, we it was um, done to the adjustment layer so we can um, adjust it further. Um, but that's what you, you could do if you're trying to match footage from two different cameras, but it's not always a sure bet. Um, specifically for me, when I'm working with, with illustrations and stuff, it kind of matters if it looks a little too yellow, as opposed to if I'm working with people and I want to stylize it, I don't really mind if I made everyone look a little bit blue or orange or whatever, that's up to me. But with the artwork, I'm a little bit more touchy what's it called a little bit more sensitive to it right so more precious less yeah a little, a little bit more precious so the color match we got it to work thank you so much this is kind of the window i was looking for but i was looking for it in, in the wrong space uh, um so we're going to i'm going to undo the color match because i don't love it okay and we're going to get out of this space if we can i think i have to click here no. Unclick comparison view. There we go. Success. <laughs> um, sometimes I feel like I get into a window and then I have no way of getting out. Because <laughs> um, I'll press like escape and I'll do all sorts of crazy stuff. Okay. So let's do some basic correction. Again, all of these uh, clips that are under the adjustment layer are pretty much the same. So we're going to affect the adjustment layer. And then that will kind of apply to all of those clips. Let's get the white balance selector. Beep. Beep, boop. There we go. Click here. Okay, maybe that did that did a little something over here. I'll take it. <laughs> and then here is really up to your personal preference. Like I'm not gonna say always do it at X, Y, and Z because that it will never work. But I like to go up by increments of 0.5. Oh, see, that's a, that's a bit much, but I, I'm kind of into it. You know, um, if there's any photographers watching, I'm sure you guys are like, oh, that's a little much. Um, but my taste is graphic. Mm. So I like things a little bit more I was wondering, because there is like a face detection when you do that frame matching. I was wondering if you could, maybe we can trick trick the algorithm into thinking that the sketch person is a this, real person. And then I'm sure we could. Because <laughs> it's, I mean, it's happened to me. And then I'm like, what has happened? Like, where <laughs> am I? Yeah, um, it's one of those interesting things where, you know, sometimes the algorithm gets it right. Sometimes it is not right. But you know, it's, it's acceptable that it would think a face is a face. That's, uh, that's totally the algorithm is doing its best. <laughs> You know, it's only taught by us humans. Mm -hmm. Look, Sensei, Sensei is getting better all the time. It's in the dojo working out, so yes, it's it's, it's training all the time. I appreciate when 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 it advances. <laughs> it, it always uh, makes my life easier. Um, so you can see I've been just messing with things, but because this is applied to all of the all of the clips, I kind of like to double check like this. Um, Exposure here looks a little bit crazy on this one. Like it looks pretty blown out and you lost basically all the details here. Um, so I'm actually going to, I could do two things. I could make the adjustment layer less intense, but it seems to kind of work well for all the other clips. I mean, to brighten them up. So I think I'm just gonna go into this specific clip and turn it down a little bit. And I'm gonna actually turn it down at the source because I think I also have it here, but here it works well. So maybe I won't 
Mm. I'm just going to do it on this one clip. So just for you guys watching, for those watching at home, um, you could do, I'm just for an example, I'm just going to like really blow this out. Okay, so I've applied it to, you can see here, main sequence, DJI 0338. I'm applying just to the specific clip that I have highlighted here, an exposure of 2.6. Incredible. <laughs> but if I wanted to, I'm going to put this back to zero. I could affect it at the source. And if I click over here to source and do 2.0 exposure, now, this clip is super bright, and I think this clip should also be. Oh, no, this clip isn't because it's a copy. Mm. But if I had, it's a copy because, Evan, look, this is why it was a copy. Because I wanted to do the automate to sequence, and I wanted multiple cuts. Mm. So I had to duplicate it to make a secondary cut in the same footage. Um, but if I had this clip, let's say I decided I wanted to bring in uh different from that same clip i just moved it down on the on the footage you can see this is also blown out no matter how many times i cut it or i'm at a different spot this clip globally on this timeline but it just so happens to be only here once mm -hmm. will be blown out but if i click on this and now i go back to it let's go back to the first one click on it, click on source, and I go and make it zero and I make it extremely orange. Now it's orange here and it's also orange here and here. So that's just a tip. In my case, I only have it in here once because I was working with the automated sequence and I duplicated it. But it happens often where you have a little segments of a clip in multiple places. Mm. And this way you wouldn't have to copy and paste every single time or do any of that kind of stuff. Saving you some clicks. Saving you a couple of clicks. Now, what I want to do to this clip is just turn down the exposure a little bit so it's not as, as blown out when the adjustment layer passes over it. Okay. So now everything looks kind of the same, but I think I want to kind of up the saturation and contrast make it a little nicer. Again, here is where you could add like LUTs and stuff like that. But because I'm working with my artwork, I don't tend to overly stylize it. Um, let me add a little contrast. Oh, ooh, ooh. I always get tempted with all these different little creative tools. But then um, at the end, I export it and I'm like, oh, no, all the artwork looks like a weird Instagram photo <laughs> and I have to tone it down. Man, uh, so uh, from the chat, Rick is saying that uh, he has to use the eyedropper because of his uh, red green color um, uh, color balance. So uh, for anyone out there who is also uh, dealing with some, uh, maybe some ocular mm, differences, uh, they can definitely experience a lot of color troubles. My, my own dad was, uh, has uh, red green color blindness uh, and uh, <laughs> oddly sold stained glass windows for a long time. They are trippy. Uh, <laughs> so, That's funny. Yeah, it's it's interesting. Like that other like the, our perceptions of color are are sometimes so so different. You know, even if we're looking at the same thing, we're perceiving it the same way. Um, so I was gonna wonder. You do put a lot of stuff out on on Instagram, you are, you're putting a lot of art out there. Are you always living filter free or uh, are you, are you using filters in sort of color treatments more sporadically, more, um, more measured? You know, now that you ask me, I do live a pretty filter free lifestyle. Um, mostly because I'm indecisive. Once I start getting into um, Lightroom and I start playing with all the different kind of filters, I'm just so into, there's so many options. And I feel like once I pick one, the next, the next time I post a photo, should it also look like that? Mm -hmm. um, so because of that, I tend to just edit kind of in just the, the iPhone editing tools. I just maybe bump up the saturation. Sometimes I lower the contrast so it doesn't look as crazy. 
you know, maybe add a little grain to be trendy, but um, I tend not to use too many, too many filters, but you know, if next week I'm using a filter, please, please don't come after me. I, I change my mind all the time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, look, we'll try not to jump on you for getting off brand. Please, That's so right. Please, please. Um, I want to add a little bit of noise. And so I'm looking for it here. It's not in here. I, I think I have to bring it in maybe, but I'm just double checking. Oops. Because I want to play with it. I don't think it's in there. So let me go to window effects it says it's already here but I, oh it's right down here at the bottom do do do, do. i want to add some noise mm, we have so many noises to choose from so i'm gonna <laughs> drop it into my i just dragged it over to my adjustment layer and i want to make sure that i'm viewing i want to kind of view the artwork oh is it not live now there we go okay um amount of noise we're just gonna play with it not too much you guys because we all know it's fake <laughs> you know it's like if it was real film i wouldn't be editing anything but it's obviously fake so all of this fake S subtle i have to be subtle with it i'm actually just gonna add like barely maybe like 1.75 that's our particular I am. all right i'll take that and then so i think that's good for the intro and now we're gonna do another adjustment layer for kind of the rest of the footage um just one kind of master adjustment layer almost mm. i call it a master and now it sounds really important but it's just another one <laughs> don't be fooled you guys we're not, we're not trying to big it up here no i know you guys were were on to me in the chat <laughs> I'm well, kidding. i, I can't see the chat <laughs> Steve Festus in the chat is is getting at me about uh he's got some real Canadian inside jokes. Uh there was it's asking if uh, if my dad is Red Green, the famous Canadian broadcaster. That's um for anyone who doesn't know Canadian television, um keep your stick on the ice. We're all in this together. And that's only for only for the inside fans. Uh, uh, uh yeah, it's not me, unfortunately. <laughs> no. Look, if you if you'd like to hear about obscure Canadian broadcasting, we can get into it. But uh, we're we're here we're here, we're here to stick with the artwork for now. Not that that show isn't art, but um, anyway. We can we can have a range of topics true. on this live stream, or we not? Okay, so I just made another adjustment layer. This one is from scratch again. So now we have this one. I'm just going to extend it. Um, this one is going to be usually covering me talking to the camera and also some uh, just like camera footage. Thankfully here, the difference is only between iPhone and, M and the M50 camera. Hmm. But I feel like the iPhone footage is usually pretty true colors. Um, so I don't, I'm not very particular. You, you guys if you want to spend hours upon hours editing this adjustment layer you can but <laughs> i've chosen not to um because i want to show you some other stuff this is only the beginning so let's go back into color here we go we're back there i'm selecting the adjustment layer and um, since my face, I've decided is the most important part of this. I want to make sure that I look good with this adjustment layer and then make sure that the art also looks good. That is the order of priorities happening here. Um, let's do some white balance. My walls are not white, so I can't do it to that. Hmm. But these AirPods are white. Ooh. That's actually the color of my walls, to be fair. <laughs> That's actually the real color in here, but. It's looking pretty accurate then. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty accurate, but I 
hate it. I'm actually going to use kind of the white. I ended up using the white of this book. Wait, no, I just did it and it was not. Maybe a little bit there. Okay, so we're going to use as a starting point. I know my, I'm, gonna, I'm indecisive, you guys. I'm going to go back to this. But I'm going to tone this down. Even though that may be accurate, it's a bit extreme. I looked way too orange. So I'm just going to move it a notch. And I'm actually going to manually input here because I don't want it to be that crazy. The exposure seems like it could go down a touch. Uh, maybe that's too much. So you can open all sorts of curves to take a look at this. But I on it, if I'm being honest on this live stream, I don't do that because I don't feel like I have that that much that I'm trying to correct for. Mm. Like it's more information that I need. Yeah, I was gonna um, say we're living a scope free lifestyle in here as well. Filter free, I, scope free. I know it's because with the scopes I get overwhelmed and I think I'll just end up there for too long. So realistically, if I like how this looks, mm. then I'm happy. Um and but I am really aware of like I don't want to lose a ton of details so I try and pay attention to where it's like it could be blown out like this air pod here could be a bit blown out which is why I brought down the exposure a touch but also I don't really care if you can't see the information about these air pods <laughs> <laughs> uh, personally Nice. And then I'll up the hey, contrast look, a touch. This is an Apple sponsored video, then yes. But until they until, uh, until they pay me the big bucks, I'm unconcerned, <laughs> unbothered if those are looking a little crazy. But I do I do kind of take it into consideration while I'm looking at everything else. Yes, like I'm always curious about whenever I see somebody's somebody's desk and I, I'm going to ask the people in the chat too. I notice you have a book holding up your monitor as is tradition. Oh. What, uh, what, what book do you use to keep your monitor up? Mine it, is an advertising textbook from, uh, from first year. I think it's called affirmations for the inner child. Yeah. You know, I picked it up at a, at a thrift store and I was like, some of it are really deep, like inspirational things where I'm like, that's more than I needed. Uh, and some of them are cute, but it's actually, I have my um, monitor on this monitor stand and that book is just hanging out underneath. Oh, okay. But for when I need a little pick me up and a little affirmation, um, but it can be a little heavy. So sometimes it's <laughs> unnecessary. Okay, so I'm just really just going by like vibe here. If you want to know how I edit my YouTube videos, it's by vibe. It's not by um, scopes, um, everyone. And yeah, there's so much that you can do. Here we go. We have these curves. So much that you can do that I don't do. But if you're interested in getting started doing all of this stuff, I definitely um, can't recommend the Lumetri color panel enough. It's great. And here's where you would also add, um, like if you have a LUT, you could do some crazy LUTs. I'm not, I'm not a LUT person, so I'm not gonna fake it for you guys and say like, now I have a LUT. Um, I don't. Um, so yeah, that's kind of the, it's like a simple adjustment and I'm just going to apply it. I'm just gonna drag it across the rest of the, the whole thing. Wait, the whole thing? The whole thing. Because it's just iPhone and M50 footage, and it was a pretty light um, edit. So mm. I'm not, you know, if I had put a crazy LUT on there, then I couldn't do something like that because I would want to go through and double check each one. But in this case, it's okay. And I might want to, you know, here these are looking, it looks a little darker, but it's already, that's part of the footage. So, but this looks fine. Ooh, th this, this might not look fine. So I can click on it and I'll go to sort, well, sort, if I do source, it'll affect the one on the left too, but that's okay. Mm. And maybe bring down the exposure, just 0.25, something like that. Oh, this is just, you can see the camera had to focus and ooh, let me bring this down. It's, 
I think here the camera just had to focus on the artwork and me and it had a hard time doing both. There you go. Oh yeah, because it'd be adjusting its auto exposure trying to. Yes, it's trying auto to exposure. Good. Exactly. So I can go in and, and fix that. But that's basically how I do it. If I create this master adjustment layer that kind of applies to everything and makes everything look a touch better. And then if I have any other footage that I'm like, oh, that's too dark, like notably too dark or something, I go in and I affect just that one clip or the clips from that footage. Yeah. Um, but otherwise, I'm done with it. <laughs> I could add a little noise. This clip looks a little too orange for me. And I think it's just one, it's these two clips. So I can do that thing that I was thinking about. I click source and let's try it out. Let's do white balance to like right here. That corrected it and it also corrected it for the other ones, as you can see. Hmm. Oh yeah, and the little little icons on the clips, Change. they have a little red box around them now. So yeah, that's... to signal that those all were affected. So that's a quick way to do it. I mean, the other way I was doing it up until recently, until I learned from Adobe Creator Camp Advance, taught by Mandy Celine, and Evan was also a mentor, and there's a lot of other mentors on there. I learned that little trick about if you just click source, you can adjust all the clips from the same kind of piece of footage, as opposed to just affecting one little clip. I had no idea. I was copy and pasting my changes evan like like a sucker You're yeah right. totally totally you don't know what you don't know and that was something i didn't know um oh i was waiting for this is the clip i was looking for so i actually filmed this at night so mm. i already knew this is this is a day that i like barely made it to the drawing table um so I knew that this clip was gonna have awful light and you can even see the shadows from my tripod but that's neither here nor there. Let's color correct. Let's color correct the source. S click white balance. Let's try that. Ooh, we're gonna have to like artificially correct it because the light was different. All right, I mean, you know, do I love that there's a big shadow right down the middle of it? Yes, <laughs> no, I hate that, but we're, we're making do. Okay, so these are actually two different clips, but mm. I want the same thing to happen. So can I copy and paste to the source? Let me see. I go like this. I don't, not that it really matters because I don't have it anywhere else, but we're going to paste. Did I not paste the right things? I might have not copied the right things. Copy. Paste. Hmm. Maybe well, I'm not. Right, because you've applied it to the source, it's like, ah, there's no effects on that thing. There's no I mean... effect on there, yeah. I'm like, is that supposed to happen or am I just not getting right? Okay, so I'm just going to remember that it's negative 3.48 and 9. And let's see if. Let's see if I just drop it in here. Three point. <laughs> oh, I already forgot. Okay, let's see. Cause it's at source. 34.8 and nine. I know I said it wrong. Negative 34.8 and then nine. Just to get those two to at least match. Even though they were filmed at night, they look a little bit brighter that way and you know, less jarring. And yeah, be less of a less of a shock compared to less the of other. a shock. Yes, yes. And these look fine. All right, so that's kind of how I use the adjustment layers. I love stopping at really flattering angles of myself. <laughs> um, that's the best part of this live stream. Um, okay, so enough about adjustment layers. You guys get the picture. You guys kind of saw how you can affect the source layer versus just the clip. 
and let's keep it moving it's true where where are we off to next and i want to say let's say have a good night to uh robert uh Werneberg, who's taken off i guess it is nighttime other places in the world i keep keep remembering that you know it's it, the earth is a sphere and people have different times in different places so it's uh fantastic um we thank Thanks everyone for- I'm glad that you also believe the the Earth is a sphere, Evan. I'm glad we're on the same page there. <laughs> <laughs> that would be a shocking twist, I think. That would make the live stream really interesting. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, look, we can we could get into, into all sorts of territories. I know I know we said all topics were fair game, but uh, let's not go there. Um, where are we moving on to uh, to next? I know I know the plan is to do some graphics today as well. Yes, uh, wanna, where, that's what we're up to yeah. now. Call yeah. Those. So what I think we should do next is I okay. In case you missed it, I'm an illustrator at Fabiolita Draws. Just in case you missed it, um, and so I want to draw my own graphics. Yes, I could type in some titles, but I prefer to use Adobe Fresco on my iPad to actually draw some little title screens Um, and then i'll show you how i like to do that because with the fresco app you have access to all sorts of really awesome textured brushes and Mm -hmm. so there's there's no need to just you can type but why not draw using some crazy brush like a marker or a pencil which is my favorite which doesn't sound crazy but is different Um, so yeah let's move to the ipad so i can show you guys how i like to work yeah, you, you heard it here first, folks. Why type when you can draw? Take that, take that fonts, take that. Yeah. I, I'm, a, <laughs> I'm a sucker for hand lettering. Uh, it's a great, uh, I don't know, it's such a it's such a creative practice to like really express lettering. Um, I'd say way more than most fonts can do. So it's, uh, I don't know, it's a wild scene. Okay, so we made it to the iPad. Now, please don't be alarmed by my inbox notifications. Yeah, everyone, we... everyone, calm down. It's natural. <laughs> I don't. It's just spam or something. Well, I don't know. I said this was going to be a judgment-free uh, zone, but um... I like to get in. I like. I studied advertising, so I like to get in front of um, the conflict or whatever that's right you want to shape the narrative you want to uh come out ahead address it first exactly i'm addressing it first okay so i don't want let me move my ipad here so that i'm not looking away from you guys okay make sure nothing turns off okay you guys so we're on my ipad if you open up adobe fresco and you have adobe creative cloud which would make sense if you're using premiere and fresco then everything will start syncing and i created this file here already for us so that you wouldn't have to watch me do this but it's just a 1920 by 1080 file so you could click this one right here the full hd if you are doing working in a bigger size then go ahead and you know set up a custom one to that size but we're going to do this one okay and i like i said i have it set to black because um, I like to draw everything in white in order to put it into my video. And so if I don't have this black background, you guys just wouldn't see anything that I'm doing. It would just be so pointless. Like you can barely see that. So we're gonna turn on this black layer knowing that it's not actually part of what we're gonna use. But one more thing I'm gonna turn on is the um, grid because I like to make sure, sometimes when I'm drawing, I kind of draw at an angle and all my letters start to kind of slowly tilt up and down. This helps me not do that. Um, Okay, and so basically this is it. I'm going to, what I wanna do is make a new layer. I can't remember if that's new or old, so I made another one. And um, I wanna do the title for when that intro shows up and I have the, the little beat going and the slow B-roll. I wanna have a cool title. So um, let's do, oops. Basically it's gonna be the seven day sketchbook challenge, but I want seven day to be one element, sketchbook challenge to be another element so that I can kind of 
time them in my Premiere Pro timeline, have the seven day come in first and the ske sketchbook challenge come in later. So because of that, I'm gonna draw them on separate layers. So ooh, it's a little bit hard to see with the big dot. Now, I am pretty forgiving and I try not to be too fancy with it, but you also wanna remember that you're gonna have this going over a lot of different footage. So you kind of want to make sure that it's a bit thicker than you would maybe normally draw. Um, so I'm just going to do a little sketch. This won't be final, you guys. It's all it's all sketching. We got some awesome. got some love coming from uh, Danny Fuentes. Uh, it's a fabulous, yes. really great. Uh, oh my God, Danny! Hi. And uh, Steve Festus is uh, showing his love for hieroglyphics, the original way of drawing words, which is great. Um, we, we stand a legend hieroglyphics. Um, so I've not used fresco before. I would love to know sort of, so any element that you want to animate separately, that you want to bring on separately, we have to put them on separate layers. Talk to me about, I don't yes. know, how long have you been integrating fresco into your videos? I'd love to know, you know, more about, about how you came to it. Fresco is pretty new. So, uh, tell, tell me about, about your journey with it. Yeah. So before i used to use just you know maybe another drawing app and then have to bring it in but by having fresco i'm actually able to the cool thing about fresco is that you get that automatic adobe creative cloud psd mm. and so then you don't have to kind of drop like airdrop yourself files or anything like that and you can have the multiple layers in one psd i don't know it's just a lot more smoother a lot more smoother, horrible English, a lot smoother to um, use this, uh, P use Adobe Fresco. So what I like to do is, since I want all the, just so you guys know what we're trying to do here, what my goal is, I want each little hand-drawn element to kind of wiggle. And the best way that I found to do that is to draw it three times. And then in Premiere Pro, we'll add the little bit of uh, staggering to make it move. Um, and because of that, we're gonna do seven day, we're gonna draw that three times and have that be one kind of, uh, what's it called, folder group. And then we're gonna do sketchbook challenge, which is one el another element that I want to come in later as one layer, one group. And I'm gonna draw it three times. So it's a little confusing when I say it out loud, but, let me show you here. So I've done this sketch now of kind of laying out where I want it to be. It's not perfect. We can use these tools to recenter it um, just to make sure that it's good enough. And then I just kind of lowered the opacity on that. I'm using it now as a guide. And this is my favorite brush here. And you can download, um, I use the sketching pencil and I think maybe I made it a different size than what it's supposed to be, but I download, you can download a bunch of free brushes from Adobe using, um, if you go on, if you go on the internet in a regular browser, um, you can Google Kyle T. Webster Adobe Fresco brushes and you can download them on your computer and airdrop them to your iPad and they'll automatically open up in fresco like you, you don't have to worry about it your ipad knows what to do um and then you can use them and you get a ton more options so if you download fresco and you're like oh these these brushes aren't my favorite try downloading the huge library that that's available um there has to be something that you'll like in there oh yeah Kyle, kyle's putting in the work he's he's given us the brushes he's the brush master general it's uh yes fantastic uh and also be sure to check out his show uh brush hour um another great pun available here on on the uh, adobe live um and i did want to say because we are kind of at the halfway point people if you're watching us on youtube we want to see you come over here we want to see you on behance please come over to behance.net uh and uh, join us on adobe live over there uh, we want to see in the chat we want to know what's going on if you have questions we want to answer them so bring them to us if you have any quandaries about fresco how it works great ways to use it. We have top illustrator here who can uh, talk you through, talk you through the troubles. And we have an artist spotlight coming up in about half an hour. So we're going to be uh, showing some love uh, to, to a member of the artistic community here. And 
if you want to nominate someone, there should be a little little spot, a little tab right at the top of the chat, Artist Spotlight. See, it says chat, info, and Artist Spotlight. That's the next one. So uh, if there's someone you want us to have a look at, nominate them in there, please, please. But, 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 I'm seeing a lot of tilting going on. I'm seeing a lot of moving around. Sorry, yes. What's what's going on? How <laughs> This is crazy. It's because I don't want to move the iPad, but I keep forget because I think that if I move the iPad, it's going to move the... <laughs> I am. Right. I'm, I'm going to mess up the stream if you move me like that. <laughs> so, okay, hold on. Let me straighten this so it doesn't look crazy. Okay, and I'll just tilt the iPad. But um, yeah, just I'm redrawing kind of a better version. I would say a better version, use that word lightly, of the sketch. Um, and the sketch was just kind of for layout. And now I'm using the grid a little bit and everything, the pencil to kind of fill in the title. And so that's kind of what it would look like. Um, yeah, it, it could use a little work, you guys, like maybe this H is a little crazy, but also that's what gives it character. At the end of the day, whenever I kind of let my hand do whatever it wants, it's kind of fun. and you know, by the time, this is the honest truth, by the time I get to this point in the video making process, I'm just, just write it down, just get it into the video. We're not so precious anymore. So, you know, it is what it is, but I think that kind of also gives it character because otherwise it would look maybe too nice. Mm. And really well, like you can, you can be as granular, you can stay with it forever. Like you would drive yourself crazy trying to make it perfect. I would, and I, I really would do that to myself. So I try not to, but you know, this C looked a little wild. So maybe I'll, I'll redraw it. Now it's a little out of place. Just grab it. The cool thing is you can do all of this pretty quickly. Okay. So deselect, let's say this is what we're going to go with. I'm going to move it a touch down. Obviously, once you bring this into premiere, you can kind of rearrange it. Um, but I like to get it a little bit exactly where I would want it just to kind of have less things to do in the effects controls panel. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we're gonna go with this. And like I said, this is now just one layer, but I want seven day to be one layer and then sketchbook challenge to be another in terms of I want that to be one, I guess, like frame and then sketchbook challenge to be a separate one. I don't want them to be together. So what I'm going to do now is lower the opacity on that, add another frame and we're going to quick, I'm going to be fast now you guys, cause I want to make sure I get through this. Um, I'm going to draw that one more time. I want to draw this three times so that I can get it to animate. Now I'm just going to close that, I draw it, add another layer, draw it again. And now you don't want to be perfect with this because if you're perfect with it, there won't be any movement because you need the imperfections to create that little wiggle. Okay, so now seven day, we have it drawn three times and I'm going to select multiple, put it in a folder and put it away. Now I'm going to do the same thing with sketchbook challenge. I want to draw it three times. So let's just get it. Oops, <laughs> I already messed it up. Okay, so it doesn't have to be identical. It just has to be drawn. Ooh, that one turned out a little fatter, but I kind of like it. <laughs> thick letter. Yeah, um... that's a thick one. <laughs> So yeah, oh, it's, and uh, Fergie saying that uh, they're, they're taking notes like crazy. Yeah, take take notes, everybody. Um, and uh, also, you can always enjoy the replays of these things. We got replays on on here that you can enjoy. So many subjects, so many people. Um, it is a a wealth of of information coming at you every day. Uh, and for the rest of the week, there's lots of great stuff happening. So please, please, please enjoy the replays. Uh, we are we are here for your convenience for all time, no pressure. This will be forever online, no pressure. Until the eventual destruction of the internet, yes. Everyone will see me draw this. Look at all my skills. Okay, so that's just one time. So I'm gonna draw it, I'm gonna draw it two more times and try to be quick with it here. 
Um, but this is essential to my video making process. And this is one of the reasons why I try and keep um, the color correcting kind of to a minimum. Ooh, that's horrible. I can't live with myself with that one. Um, and, and kind of be kind of quick with everything else because this is where I feel I add the character to my videos. Mm. If something's got to give, you know, it's, it's that and not this. <laughs> Look, we, we all have to make sacrifices somewhere in the workflow. <laughs> yes, that's that's what I'm saying. Pick pick where you're gonna focus. And for me, it's this and and capturing the footage mm -hmm. is the other important thing. Obviously. Wow, my hand is a little nuts today. <laughs> okay, and one more time. Okay. And yeah, oh, we've we've managed to convert some people coming over from YouTube. Hello, hello. We got uh I think it's uh Yathan uh, uh Sarmiento. Hello, hello. Hello, Nathan. Thanks for joining us. Oh, wait. You know what? I always I always pronounce J's bad. Is it is it So let me know. Do let me know. Is it is it Yathan or Jathan? So please do let me know which which it is. I don't think I've ever pronounced the J correctly in my life so far. I'll get there eventually. No, I won't. That won't. That will not happen. <laughs> I think now that you're making me think about it, yeah, I feel very aware of it. Yeah. I'm like giraffe. No, that's a G. I'm getting all confused. Well, I was I was gonna say. I mean, you, when when we were on here uh, yesterday, you said GIF with such confidence. Um, I've started saying GIF to uh, honor my. Dutch in-laws. So. Whoa. I do say Jeff with confidence and no one can change my opinion on that one. <laughs> but you can do whatever you'd like. I don't have a agenda. Okay. So just to catch you guys up to what I've done, I have here a seven day. And if I double click this, it's it's drawn three times. So you can't really tell because they're stacked on top of each other, which is what you want, but it's there. And same for here. So it looks crazy because there's three layers. Okay, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna make it visible. I'm gonna make this visible and everything else can stay. And now I'm gonna click back because I want it to save and sync up. Hmm. So I'm waiting for that little sync arrow to go to green, which it just has. Thank you, Adobe Creative Cloud. <laughs> Big shout I, out. I don't know. Praise just thought I would cloud. mention it. <laughs> just thought I would can't like very low key give it a shout out. Okay, so now it would be a great time to move back to the desktop hmm. so I can show you how to um, bring that into your Premiere Pro project and keep it moving we can get that intro looking tip top Perfect. yes we must return because I'm, cu I'm curious about how it comes how it comes out of the fresco so i am very um, i'm intently st staring intently yes i guess okay okay so i'm back at the desktop can you guys boop boop, boop. hi do 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 let me see well, we get that sorted. I want to say hello to Annika. Hello, hello. Oh, I believe you can you can catch on uh, on some live streams as well. There's a lot of great live streaming going on on Behance. Um, I'll say so. Not just here on here on Adobe, Adobe Live. We also have uh, a lot of creatives, a lot of independent creatives streaming. So you can even when when the show is over today, as it will be eventually, you can fill your evenings, you can fill your mornings with so much so much creative streaming. Uh, fill your boots, as we say. There's so many great, talented people on here. It's fantastic. But, uh, and we're back. Okay, so we're back here. And here is where Photoshop comes in. And because Adobe Fresco, um, the Creative Cloud files that we were working on automatically get saved into Adobe Photoshop. And so 
now if I go into, um, let me see. I'm just gonna open a bunch of stuff, cloud documents. And so this one will come up. So I'll click that. Syncing, more synchronizing. More syncing, more syncing. Okay. So here's exactly what we had in there. And I had all these other layers because maybe I'll show you guys that after, but I want to make sure we have this set. So here I'm going to just, and I could have done this in Fresco, but I knew that I was going to bring it into here. So I just figured I'd do it on my keyboard. But um, what I like to do now is, now this is how I do it. I'm sure there's another way to do it. Okay. This is how I do it. It's mm -hmm. my live stream. <laughs> So, okay, so I delete the, these other ones and now here we go. It's on the transparent background. Now I do command shift S to save it because I just want this set of layers saved kind of together without anything else so that I can bring it kind of cleanly into Premiere Pro. And now I save it into my actual project. Let's go into graphics and we'll say, uh, 01, let's say 02 actually, sketchbook challenge. Okay, and okay. And now I press undo. Be careful here. I delete sketchbook one. I delete everything else. Now I have seven day command shift S. And now I save 01, seven day. And so what I tend to do is I'll draw everything on Fresco in one file and then do this. You could, I guess, make a million Fresco files and then open them each, but it's just as much work, I think. So once that's done, honestly, Photoshop is just kind of our middleman here. Thank you, Photoshop. You can go away now, but <laughs> Photoshop, beautiful. We're back here. You wanna bring up Finder and we have our graphics. So seven day and sketchbook challenge, they're both PSDs. So I'm gonna hit shift, click on both of them and drag them into my graphics folder. Now they're importing. Okay, another important moment here. You don't wanna merge all the layers because then they would just look really bad. <laughs> so you want to create a sequence with all of those layers in them. Hit okay, again, do the same thing, okay. And now when you go into graphics, you should have this little sequence that's called seven day, cause that's what we named it. So I'm gonna double click and you can see these are our files. They're all the same length, but in order to get them to move, we need to stagger them. So here I do right click speed duration, and then I'm gonna make this like, I tend to do 04, what is that? Frames or like milli, yeah. milli, milliseconds? <laughs> make them real small. Yeah, we're, we're coming down to frames at that point. Yeah, so four frames. And now I stagger them. And then I do a marquee box, grab them all. And then I paste, oops, wait, I should have copied first. Copy and then I paste. And then sometimes I'm like, I need to be even faster. Command A, grab them all, copy, paste. And now I'm pasting so many frames. Okay, that's probably excessive, but it works. And we're gonna do the exact same to the sketchbook challenge one. So I highlight them all, right click speed duration. And then we do it again. And while you're working that process, we've got, uh, we'll get to first off, uh, <laughs> hey, Stoney, how's it going? Um, and Mel is asking, uh, that's uh, Mel uh, Wolverson is asking, why not export animation video directly from Fresco? Is that a thing we can do? What can we export out of Fresco? I have no idea. I don't think we can export, um, we can't export the, you can only do, a snapshot and then you can export kind of the flat versions hmm. i think i don't think you can export yeah you only have png jpeg psd and pdf the reason i don't export let's say 
why I don't go into Photoshop and make a GIF is because if I import the GIF, it will flatten all of the texture that I got from the fresco brush. Mm. So it will suddenly look just really crunchy. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Like, um, even if I play with the GIF, if it's transparent, it still doesn't kind of keep all the rich opacity that the brush creates. And I just don't like it. I don't think it looks as good. Now, if you're using a flat brush that has no texture, then maybe you could export a GIF from Photoshop and drag that in. But I just don't like it as much. And I guess if you wanted to do in Photoshop, you could then create a sequence and video export from there. But I don't know. I find no matter how you do it, it's still going to be kind of the same amount of work. So up to you yeah. which route you go about it. But this is the one that I like. Hmm. Yeah, and uh, oh, and people are confirming in the chat. Don't worry. Apparently, the such features are coming soon. <laughs> so just uh, that would be nice. The, the big brains over there at Fresco, they've got their they got their finger on the pulse. They know what's going yes. on. Yes. Okay, so once I did kind of this, and I just kind of did it for a random amount of time. It's not even they're not even the same, but you can get them to match up if you need. Then I drag in those sequences to my footage, into my timeline, and they should be right there. Yes! Success! Um, okay, so now they're showing up. I put them both right at the beginning, but here's the cool thing now that we have the sequences is that we can add kind of any effects that we want. So I want seven day maybe to show up first. And then I want right here when the music, time to the music for sketchbook challenge to show up. And I'm gonna let both of them stay until right about here, let's say. Oh, sketchbook challenge is not long enough. That's kind of why I like this. I can just make it longer as I need. Okay, so now they're both in and they're both wiggling. Success. So that's my favorite part of the whole process. And um, you can start to do some cool stuff since you have a sequence, which um, is fun. You can go to effects and we can maybe add some transition effects right here, video transitions. Oops, I have that selected. Okay. So like I can do a wipe. So I think this one is so I'll drop that to the beginning and then I can also drop it here. And then now it even has like a cool transition before it comes in. And I can do that also on, on the out. I mean, but you can play. There's like so many different video transitions that you can apply here. Mm -hmm. Another one I really like, where'd it go? It's not dissolve, it's called like gradient. Oh, I think it's this gradient wipe one. I'm just gonna drop that over. Not enough love for gradient wipe out here. Come on, people. <laughs> I don't know what it does normally, but with these like PNGs, it kind of like dissolves it, I think, in like a cool way. Yeah, see, it kind of like slowly fades in. Um, and if I were to draw that, it would take forever. Instead, I can just do it like this. We have a question in the chat here. Where, where do you get your audio from? We talked about it a bit yesterday, but uh, for those joining in today, let's uh, give them a refresher. Where, where do these? Yes. Where do these <laughs> chill these vibes? Chill beats. Come from? Yeah. Yes, uh, my chill beats come from Epidemic Sound, and I tend to grab them from the website and bring them into my my project. You can see right here. I have um, here music. Boop, boop, boop. I have some remixes in here, but yeah, there are, these are all epidemic sound ones. And the cool thing is that you can also grab them right through Premiere in the audio panel. I think it is. You yeah, can also enjoy, pull them in. Uh, if we enjoy the essential graphics uh, or the essential yes. sound space, browse around. You'll find some of them in there. It's uh, yeah. It's you can a find them in here too. So yeah, that's where I get my awesome 
feeds from but sometimes yeah sometimes like i'm i'm working in there and i'm like oh man no wonder this sounds so familiar i was just watching somebody else's video and they had that song and now i put it in mine and I, and i'm i thought you know it's the other way around or whatever but it's pretty funny <laughs> see i get when i'm when i'm watching regular tv you know with ads and stuff and then i hear a song that i was i was subjected to for an overlong time on a commercial i have instant and like, facts and <laughs> yeah it just takes you back to a dark place um i feel that it's like when you hear um the iphone alarm on tv <laughs> oh my god it, it it really messes with me yeah you have like, a please, mouse switch for your for your phone <laughs> please please no more let it stop uh okay um so that's basically what i do and just so that you guys know like I did it here for the title, but I'm probably going to add little ones throughout that say like day one, day two, since this is a seven day sketchbook challenge, I'll probably also do some that are like, like, comment, subscribe that I already have made and usually just bring them in. Um, and I'm going to add one like for my Instagram so people know where to follow me and find me at Fabulita Draws, um, stuff like that. <laughs> Um, okay. And aside from that, um, I also like to add just kind of an outro, oh, let me go back, an outro graphic, which I haven't brought in yet. I have like this end screen graphic that I made using Adobe Fresco. And so I, I have that for all my projects. I just import it and then I drop it at the end and I tend to make that about 10 seconds. I think that's like the max amount of time that um, YouTube allows it to be or something like that. Sounds like a, sounds like a healthy amount. Um, yeah. I don't know where we're, we're artist spotlight over here. We're going to, we're going to be talking about uh, an artist in about, you know, six, six and a half minutes, but I'd love to just pause for a minute and ask you about, this end screen i know there's a lot of people watching that probably make their own youtube com you know content out there they're starting their own channels talk to me about the importance of this kind of thing at the end of a video why why is it here why is it useful yes. and what needs to be here yeah i find it really useful i feel like it kind of wraps up my video after i say bye it kind of just transitions people right there and i like to use it to have the subscribe button and then YouTube lets you kind of put in some, I think it automatically loads some videos for them. So I think right here um, on the left, it'll do like um, a algorithm suggested video from your channel. And then here it will do a video that you choose. And then here you can put just like a subscribe button. So I like to have that and then maybe they don't usually watch my channel, they can find out like what kind of stuff to expect from me. So it's kind of like a little sales pitch to subscribe um, and reiterate where they can find you because maybe this is like the fifth video of mine that they've seen and they're like, oh, I could go follow her on Instagram or right there. Um, so yeah, that's why I find it really valuable. And this was super easy to make in Adobe Fresco. I could really make like a new one every time but it saves me the mental energy by just having it already made. Um, but you can just, yeah, make, make a new one whenever you want. If I want to switch the palette to like a Halloween palette or a Christmas palette, I could easily do that with Fresco and drop it in. But yeah, I love having it. I think it just wraps it all together. Yeah, it's, it's you know, that call to action at the end. If people are serious about content, you got to kind of be got to be pulling people to you all the time. Yes. I don't want to leave them hanging and wondering where could I find her <laughs> right here. Um, so yeah, I like to do, I like to do that. And I'll usually add in some outro music, which I don't think I have selected yet. No, I only have the intro music, but I'll probably use the intro music on the outro just to kind of, um, keep it all cohesive since I won't use that music anywhere else. Hmm just on the intros and the outros, but yeah, it's probably not long enough. So I'll have to do that remix thing, but I don't think we have enough time to do another remix. So oh, we look, we'll, we'll, we'll be back after the, uh, after the, um, artist spotlight to, uh, to finish up any stuff that we don't get to. It's all good. Cool. 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 So, so should I start it? 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I was like, wait, what does he mean by that? Okay. So just this is a quick refresher from yesterday. And then I have some others if I want to show you guys. But you can see here, this clip is not long enough to go all the way from the beginning of this outro to the end of my little screen. So a quick fix here is to do right click, edit click and Adobe Audition. Um, you let your computer do what it has to do. And just basically I try to get in and out of Adobe Audition without my computer exploding. <laughs> That's all I'm trying to do here. We're gonna we're gonna sneak in. They're not gonna know we were there. We're gonna sneak And then back. get right back out. Yes, because there's so much that it can do that I feel like my computer can sense it. And if I click the wrong thing, it'll just start going. Okay. So we're in here. Like I said yesterday, ignore everything except <laughs> what the sound, just listen to the sound of my voice. Okay. So you want to uh, click on the song, right click, insert into multi-track, new multi-track session. I want to stay organized. So I'm going to quickly put it where, oh, it's, it's where it needs to be right in there. And this, we're going to say outro remix. Okay. And now we're in here and you want to just, you know, that'll already be clicked. So then you should be able to hit enable remix and we're going to let it analyze the clip. In the meantime, I'm going to pop back over to Premiere Pro and double check how long I need this to be hmm. from 25 to 30. So I'm going to do like five and a half minutes just in case I need a little extra. <laughs> and the, the good people of the chat are warning, warning us that uh, we've not we've not auto saved. We've not saved files in a while. The high, high anxiety around saving. <laughs> just really, case. I'm pretty sure I had. You, but look, got, there you go. You've got auto save back in you. I've got auto save for sure. OK, so target duration right now, it's only three minutes. I need it to be five and a half. So I'm going to do five. And again, always hoping I'm not accidentally doing five hours. Right. <laughs> I have done it too many times, but okay. Yeah, that's good. Now I think playback with audition is a little bit, it was a little bit weird last time. That's why. Hmm. That's Looking true because it. of our streaming, we may not be able to interface with it and, and enjoy the remix until it's in premiere, but you know, we, yeah, we I'm can just going to hit time. cancel because I don't want to mess with anything. But just to give you guys an overview, basically where these zig, I'm like pointing, where these zigzags are, it has like cut and remixed it and I guess looped it in some way to extend it to be a beautiful, oh, actually, can you guys hear that? I don't think so, no. No? Yes? Probably <laughs> not. All right. First of all. Okay, so right at the zigzags, it kind of loops it. And all we have to do now is click File, Export, Export to Adobe Premiere Pro, Export, Open in Adobe Premiere. That's what we want. And then it'll do it, its thing. Oh, boy. And Wouldn't you know it? Flawless, flawless timing. We're, we're right down to the second on this one. <laughs> We've nailed come it. Come on. Come on. <laughs> you can do it. But we must we must spotlight an artist here. It's come it's come to that time. Um, so we're gonna we're gonna jump in. Uh, we'll see what's on my screen, um, and we'll uh, we'll share share some love around around the community as we do. Um, I'll just say you know before we get into that, just a reminder that we've got the if you want to nominate someone for the artist spotlight, you know I would recommend you know jump up jump up into the top of that chat on Behance. Get up in there. It is here i think i'm no i have to touch the other side of the screen it's it's up there you're <laughs> and uh please nominate all right so um we shall uh we shall dive in and uh peruse peruse their behance which is why it's great great to populate behance with your work um yeah so here is uh ignacio's uh work here this is uh, ignacio uh loza we've got some fantastic illustration uh we've got I love, look, I love a good visual pun, so Orang Wu-Tang uh, is definitely hitting a lot of my buttons, but 
not only do they do illustration, but they also do, we're going to see a lot of animation on here as well. So, you know, we can, we can peruse, peruse through and then say, Fabiola, if anything strikes your fancy, we'll, we'll that jump. parrot looks incredible. All right, we're going, we're going to go to parrot town first. So straight out of Buenos Aires in uh, Argentina. So, uh, shout out, shout out to you, Ignacio. I don't know if they're watching, hopefully they are, but, uh, you know, it's, uh, that's the joy. And of course we can see, you know, they've, they've been working a lot of places, but this is a great, I love a good geometric animal. So <laughs> this guy, yes. geometric lines, I don't know. What so do you sleek. Think? Yeah. That is a sleek parrot. <laughs> I love it. I love the use of all the different, um, like objects and shapes to create that that little parrot. I love it. I use a lot of organic lines, so I love when I see someone like you can really tell I spent a lot of time with with either the pen tool or whatever getting it precise. It's impressive. Mm -hmm. Well, it's it's one of those things where you know things are sometimes more um, geometric forward. Some things are more abstract. We're always kind of on this gradient, right? Across many axes uh, while we're making stuff. And you know, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna go ahead and hit this here follow button, uh, which I will encourage everyone out there to do. If you see something you like, follow it, appreciate it. That way pe people know what you like. And you know, it's also great. <laughs> Behance remembers what you like and will suggest other things to you so you can get keep getting inspired. Um, for me, first off, we, we must look at the Orang Wu-Tang. Um, well, <laughs> we, we cannot cuss on this program, but uh, just, <laughs> just know that it is uh, not something to mess with. But I, I love that in a portfolio, we see these kind of zoomed in uh, details, right? We see the big picture. We see the granularity because if this was in print, right, we would want to get in there and, and observe these fine details of things. Um, love, <laughs> love in this face. You can see the you can see all the details in there. That's a really good pro tip for Behance to to kind of create some crops to show off your work. Give That's it, really give, good. Give us the macro. Give us the micro. We want to have it. Um, this is wonderful, wonderful. It's, Straight out of the 36 chambers. Um, <laughs> so <laughs> other things, though, like I said, they've got a lot of animation on here as well. So um, sometimes we'll see that. Um, so 2D animators, uh, 2D illustrators uh, come in and they collaborate on some very slick, very advanced pieces. So sometimes sometimes you're only a, a part of the whole and uh, doing some part of the of the design. Mm -hmm some part of the illustration that goes into some highly complex pieces. Uh, I can't e yeah, I can't even imagine how complex that must be in in uh, After Effects. <laughs> oh, it's all relative, I suppose. But, <laughs> because some, some things are, are a lot simpler than others. And what really carries the stuff is an iconography that people can understand, an illustration that people can can take away, you know, immediately when they look at it. That's one of the big challenges. Um, and I think they they answer it quite well. And I really like, I really like seeing a, a project on Behance that does such a great job of kind of spelling out like a case study for us, right? That's, I don't know. Yeah, you can really tell that they put in the effort to make sure that the Behance project really tells a story and it's not just the final export. <laughs> yeah, we we want to see how you get there. We want to see what, uh, what what brings you there process that's the inspiring part because we can kind of see right at the sort of towards the beginning like the early yes. they have it's, it's just the one thing but they get they get more savvy over time for sure um, yes so, and it's it, way more inspiring too you're like okay i want to do up my project too <laughs> i like i like these kind of characters they're very exaggerated these could be very um like a children's book kind of thing this has a lot yes. of a lot of appeal to it um Looks yeah. like a sweet character. <laughs> well, it is uh, male de Panal, so it's yes. Just <laughs> what's what's Panal? Is that a bear? No, I don't know. Maybe it's a location. Hmm. Like the honey is from there or something. Yeah, honey of meal. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, let's see what else. What else we got going on in here? I would love to see. Let's see some more shapes. Let's see some more like animation. Quite, quite a, a variety of style as well, right? Which is from a. I'm going to turn the volume off uh, because I don't think I'm sharing my audio, but um, like 
to show a, a variety, like a depth of ability, I think is really fantastic. Um, as a as a commercial commercial designer, you know, you want to be able to show your versatility. Because you were talking yesterday, Fabiola, about uh, some tips for people, you know, when they're when they're drawing stuff. You, I think you said that that people should should draw or they should put out the kind of work that they want to get, right? Yes, exactly. Yeah, I mean um here ignacio has all sorts of different kinds of styles so the like an art director that's looking to hire him could see that they could hire him for this kind of stuff or maybe 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 more of the characters or the sleek kind of animations um so by having a variety of work and showing exactly what you want to be hired for what you make, what you're familiar with, then you're probably going to get more jobs that are similar to that. Um, but if he, you know, has something completely random and never wants to work in that again, then, and someone loves it and wants to hire him for it, then that'll be unfortunate. So that's why you always have to share the stuff that you want to make and anything else, leave it, leave it off. <laughs> and yeah, it's, you know, it's, it's one of these things where um, also showing, you know, here, like, Illustration is a skill set, and we see it deployed in many ways. Storyboards, we see it deployed in character design. Um, it is, it is that thing. You know, what are you great at, and then how can you deploy it? And I think they've done a really great job of showing us many, many ways that they can deploy their skills. So it is seriously a lot of um, what's it called variety. Mm. They've got the range. <laughs> they've got some range. Yep. Oh yeah, Let's see. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, we got you know a little mixed media in this part. These are the, I don't know. These these are the interesting things to me. I am because I am usually evaluating things from like a motion perspective, mm -hmm. trying to say like, well, you know, what is happening, what is moving. Um, because as someone who's not very illustrator forward myself, I'm usually working with an illustrator who's providing me beautiful things uh to animate right so i don't have to so i don't have to do all the work <laughs> it's important. I, yeah i mean i would argue a lot of the work is the motion part of it too <laughs> wink <laughs> <laughs> but uh, it's 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 great okay i just want to check out a couple more pieces in here because this again another another radically different we can see these style frames here very different yes that's light, so light. different but has its own like kind of place right like Maybe a little bit more editorial or just can't, can't wait to see these human feelings. This is gonna be And there's motion. Whoa. That's right. Yeah, this idea that like here's a line and the line is gonna change into these different forms, this kind of organic, contiguous kind of deal. And we can kind of see how we're like flowing between those different style frames, which yes. is a little, a little bit of 3D going on in here. Nice. Whoa. <laughs> Honestly, yeah. I can't even begin to wrap my mind around how to plan, how to drawing all of that, but it, it's super cool. I love seeing it come to life. So yeah, this is this is fantastic. And of course, if anyone is worried about the signs of stroke, you know, this is uh, I think doing a great job of informing us uh, of that stuff. I you know when we want to evaluate things on a design context, we want to say is it effective? Is it is it doing what we want? Um, and uh, I think it's it's doing that. So in within a minute 20, we, we learn uh, <laughs> the correct way to identify if someone's having a stroke. Call 911, look after each other. Um, but yeah, these are great. These are great. I love them. Um, one other thing I'll say is that from the Behance, we can go and check out, um, what is this, uh, Doble Nudo, I think? should be their uh their web a website attached where we can see a lot of the agency work more even more works go go deeper down the rabbit hole yeah. see more things um but yeah there's so much good stuff in here um one of the things that's that's often difficult for me to try to evaluate is like you know how much of a team is doing something who's doing what and i think they did a great job in their uh portfolio of like putting putting like these credits in here so you know, if anyone out there is working with a team, please credit credit your whole team. You can also you can also tag them all in the post. You can all share. So now we can we can actually follow all of the people who contributed to this. So that brings that's us that's awesome to know. Yeah, crediting I think is often overlooked, and that's such a simple way to get everyone correctly credited. 
Well, it's it's always the worst when you, you send something off. It's a beautiful piece of work. It's under NDA. You never get to claim what it is. <laughs> yeah, it is heartbreaking, huh? Well, it's this. Uh, I don't know. Some of the things I sign an NDA for, I'd like to never be associated with. <laughs> so. That's true. You're just like, yeah, undoubtedly, I will sign this NDA. <laughs> My secret shame. Tell no yeah. one. Yeah. Um, but yeah, we've we've got some more time to continue on with our work, so we should uh, should perhaps return to Ignacio killing it from Argentina. So good, so good. And of course, if you have more people you would like to shine a spotlight on, please nominate them in the artist spotlight. We want to see more people. We want to share that with the community. That's what we're doing on here. Um, and uh, you know, we we do it for the love of the game. So please share things. Please follow each other. Please appreciate each other's projects. Um, and that way. The system on Behance can send you more things to be inspired by. Um, I every week I get inspired by an email at a Behance, uh, and it has improved improved my game quite a lot. But yeah, uh, let's see. Let's see. I'm trying to think of anything else. Do 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 that. We do we need to cover any other uh, any other stuff? I don't know. We'll, we'll I mean we we've got more time. We'll we'll say our goodbyes later. We're still here for another twenty minutes. So uh, please uh, let's get into it. And it's so great to see people. <laughs> A lot of love for Ignacio in the chat. So it's it's great to see everyone is uh, is into I'm this. Not able to screen share while Evan is screen sharing. Uh oh. Okay, I got it. All right. All right, and we're gonna we're we gonna get back. right back to it. So, where should we go next, though? What what activity do we want to add in here? Do we want to draw more graphics? Maybe? Do we want to? Uh, I don't know. What you you tell me. Where do we where do we want to go here? Let's see. Okay. Um. So, well, if you can remember, the last thing we did was a remix that audio that song from epidemic sound to make it a little bit longer to fit into this outro mm -hmm. and i've when you bring it back into um premiere pro it goes to the beginning of your timeline i often am confused and i'm like looking for it um but i dragged it back over here and you can see now there's plenty of room now it's even too long i could re-remix it but for the sake of this live stream we won't be re-remixing it I will just shorten it here and then um, a simple little thing is to do the audio what's it called audio fade out crossfade exponential fade and so i drag that right there let's try that one more time there it is and you can't tell because it's very long and i'll just have it fade and yeah let's see i mean i know it's gonna sound way better but now that i'm not in adobe audition i don't know exactly where those remix cuts are mm. but trust me you guys it sounds smooth <laughs> you would if i played this clip for you you're not gonna know where it's where it was remixed um so that's just what i like to do i like to match my intro music and my outro music do I have to do that? No, but it kind of puts me at ease or something. It like bookends my video. Mm. Um, and then one more thing I want to show you guys is the new captioning workspace, mm. which I think is so cool. Let me make sure Adobe Audition is closed. It's well and firmly quit out before yes. we get into it. So yeah, captions, 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 captions. Um, so you know, as we're loading that up, t maybe tell the people about, you know, why it's important to caption things and uh, kind of what what purposes that serves. Yeah. So the reason captioning is so great is um, I like to do a lot of voiceover sometimes, especially with the drawing montages. And by having the captioning, people can turn it on and actually see it while it's playing, like if they have their TV on or whatever. And also just in terms of accessibility, that's key, right? Like to have the caption file um, available so that anyone who needs it in, in order to consume your content is totally free and able to do so. And you're kind of including them in your content. And this is an awesome way to do it. Selfishly, another great reason to use captions is so that you can search your own video so you can search and say all the times you said 
like or all the times you said awesome or whatever it is, you can go to it and edit it out or add a confetti effect because you repeat yourself too many times, whatever it may be. Mm, um, it, can, it can speed up your editing too. If you know, like, oh, I said something. What was that phrase I said? I need to find that. I need to pull it out like that. Those kinds. Yes. Of very, That's the useful version. The, of it. <laughs> I don't know. I look, I will admit that I I increase my own eloquence in voiceover all the time. I am, uh, I don't live that no filter lifestyle. I live that yes filter lifestyle. Yes. yes. Okay. So I'm making another, um, just for the sake of our, of our live stream, I'm making another sequence that just has a little bit of audio so that it doesn't have to transcribe the entire video right now. Um, cause that would be frustrating. And I'm just going to delete everything else that was in it. Oh, that was silly. Okay. So now, oops, oops, oops. What a mess. I'm going to get bring it to the front. Okay. We are finally at peace. I'm going to delete these parts that don't have any, any sound. Okay. So this is my intro. I do a lot of talking and a lot of talking with my hands. So it's the perfect clip to use. So we'll go here into our new little workspace captions. We haven't been here before you guys. It's like I'm <laughs> taking you to a new, new destination. Okay. We're taking a tour of all the rooms. This is the uh -huh. yeah. Okay. So we're here and now it's pretty self-explanatory. Don't get overwhelmed. You're going to hit transcribe sequence. I'm almost thinking if I should have made it even smaller. Um, audio on track. So you can, the cool thing about this is like the main um, sequence that I have, has, you just tell it what to do. So audio on track, the language, transcribe in point to out point only. Oh, I could have just done that. I could have just set the in and out point on that big sequence and it would only transcribe in there. I wasn't sure if I could do that, but now you know. And then, oh, and then also I have under... I was going to ask because under language, um, right now, English, any others? Whoa, hello. We have a lot, a lot. So that's really cool. And it's something definitely to start playing with. Uh, note to self if I want to make videos in Spanish. Okay. So before it was muted, which is why, why I wasn't letting me um, select anything, but you can choose to do the entire mix. So if you have multiple, uh, if you have a lot of dialogue on different tracks or you can just do one track. So I'm just gonna do, it would be the same no matter what I do, but here we go. And you could even do, just to show you guys around, around, the, around this new place, um, opt in to recognize when different speakers are talking. So that's kind of cool if I had, all my videos are just me and myself and I, so not relevant just yet, but one day. All right, so I just clicked that and now it's creating the auto transcription. I wonder if it was too long. Nah, it's just two minutes. Should be fine. It's going to be good. Now, it's so you mentioned selfish reasons for transcribing. May I give you another selfish reason to uh, yes, transcribe? Yes, please. So, a lot of YouTube search is predicated on um, metadata, and one of the parts of metadata is also your transcription file, right? So, if you are mentioning actually in the content, like a lot of the same words, those keywords are going to populate more heavily in the thing. So it is Ooh, search, yeah, search that algorithm is, friendly. That is another reason. There is no excuse to do without. This tool is so powerful and fast. Um, and I kind of, I mean, I know that you should have everything ready when you like upload to YouTube, but it's kind of cool because like maybe the next day, you can go and do the caption file. Obviously it's best to have it all together. So, you know, go out with a bang, but it's kind of cool that you can tack it on as opposed to like video editing where like, you know, you have to edit the entire video. You can't go back in and re-edit. So this is like a little <laughs> lazy thing. You can, uh, the next day, uh, you can always still add it in. Here we go. Oh, wow. Look at this. It, it learned my name. It has yet to learn my last name but no problem. Here's what we do. This is, this is accurate. Let's, let's play it so you guys can see how accurate it is. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Fabiola Lera. I'm an illustrator. 
I'm a designer and in today's video okay so it's pretty accurate challenge why why do a challenge so it's working great all I'm gonna do here to change any of the words is click on it and just type right over it that is frighteningly accurate that is really good um, yeah <laughs> for for something that is that is automated that's fantastic um, it's it's so cool I just all you have to do is double click to edit um, I actually realized like in this cut maybe I I cut too close to when I started um, so that's why it cut off the hello part but that's on me you know the sensei sensei they're correct <laughs> Oh, yeah, um, it's it's really great. And so like in in YouTube, I know that Google will attempt to automatically transcribe as well. It doesn't, it doesn't do this good a job. It does not this good. <laughs> it doesn't. And it would be really annoying to like sit there and correct it as opposed to here. It's a lot faster to correct. And um, let's try out the search function. So this is really cool because, oh, wait. If I had the whole timeline done, I could search the days, but I think in this clip, I don't say anything about the, but let's say it's at seven right there, all the times I said seven days. Um, maybe I, I talk about pencil. I'm, I'm just like searching words that I know is in this clip, but like theoretically, um, I could just jump to all this part all these parts just by searching. This is only one little section of my video, so I can't search the whole video and be really useful, but it's still pretty cool. Um, right here, I know that this is not what these pencils are called, but how, I, I can't expect, you know, <laughs> the, the AI to know this complicated pencil name. Um, so, but I can just correct it. And then when I upload the file into YouTube, now it will be searchable and they will know that I mentioned it. Yeah. Um, okay, so let's actually use this awesome thing because right now we're still in here. So we're gonna hit, you should, um, before you go to this step, you should go through the entire transcript and make sure it's accurate. I've done a, a 15 minute video. I've gone through the whole thing in like 30 minutes just because there's not a ton of corrections if you, um, speak clearly. If you speak really fast, which I do sometimes, it'll merge it, but so would, so would anyone. Um, okay. So then create captions and then create from sequence and then subtitle default format. I don't, I want the format to be subtitle. Hmm. I don't have any styles made just this second, but that's all good. We're going to let doubles happen because there's a lot of text and we're gonna hit create. And now it's actually gonna create the captions so we can start playing with them. Mm, right, so this is this is going from, basically from transcript to subtitle. We weren't, we weren't on true subtitle yet, we were only on transcript. So just in case people are like, wait, yes. wait, whoa, we're doing it twice? Like twice, whoa, no, that. no, no. Now you actually, before it wasn't on our sequence at all, it was just in this workspace. It wasn't on the sequence. Now we have a subtitle sequence up here and it's timed. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, there my you go. So, and obviously you can turn this off or you could have it on. You could actually burn them into your video if for some reason, like you're trying to do something like Japanese aesthetic vlog where like there's always a caption in the bottom kind of guiding the viewer through. You could do that. Or you can just have them off and be a file. So from here, you can actually um, edit it. One second. Yeah. So from right here, you can start editing it. And I can say, I want it to look, I want, this is one of my, my favorite fonts. Mm. You can change it. Wait, I thought it was a different one. <laughs> that font is boring. I like, I like these like mono fonts. Ooh. I don't know if it's applying. Hold on one second. But I like the, the mono fonts. Hmm. There we go. And then you can make it, maybe we can make it the yellow, but it would clash with my dress. So maybe not the best idea. <laughs> but 
there you have it. You can pick all these different things. And um, if you make it a style by assigning it a style, hmm. well, then you'd be able to do that. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for hanging out with us, Fabiola. Thank you for, for being with us. Before we go, please tell the people where they can find you on Instagram, where they can find you around the internet, where they can uh, follow you. Yes, um, you can find me on Instagram at Fabiolita Draws, and you can find me on YouTube at Fabiolita Draws. And from there, you can find all my website and all of that, especially you can also find it on Behance. So okay. that's an easy way to do it. Thank you so much. And hey, stick around, stick around. We've got a creative challenge coming up at you in XD and come back and see us tomorrow morning. We are back on at 9 a.m. Pacific time. We want to see your faces. We want to see you in the chat. Well, we can't see your faces. We'll see your avatars. You, you know what I mean. You can find more Evan Abrams around the internet at EC Abrams. Thank you so much for being with us. Stay creative. Be kind to each other. And we'll see you around the internet. Thanks, everyone. Bye-bye.